Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School out here at the shelter area of the Pathfinder School classroom area and we used this area to set up our bush kitchen the other day and I wanted to go over another pot suspension system with you and a notching system with you that I had some questions about on the last video. Ray Mears has a video on a point notching system that works fairly well but the video is not very detailed in how you make the notch and that notch is also mentioned in Morse Kachansky's book um, on bushcraft and it's line drawings of how to make that notch so what I wanted to do today was I wanted to kind of go through how to make that notch with you on camera give you some close-up views of how to create that notch and then how to set that up into a pot suspension system so stay with me guys and we'll get started right now alright guys the uh, knife that I'm going to use today is the new blind horse trap line companion and it's a very good bushcraft style small carving type blade and you can see that I've got it in a neck sheath configuration but I really frown on wearing knives around my neck you know in my older videos when I first started doing this stuff and making videos I was testing out different types of equipment and how I wanted to wear them how I wanted to do things and obviously everything changes over time and what I've decided or what I've found is that something hanging off your neck like this that's loose I mean I've got a couple necklaces on underneath my shirt but something that's hanging loose around your neck has a lot of opportunity to snag and grab things and if I take a stumble or I take a fall or something like that the last thing I want is something to hook inside this and jerk me up by the neck and if you've got a strong piece of cordage in there like a piece of leather or a piece of paracord you're probably not going to break it you're probably going to be hanging from it so I would just as soon not have that around my neck so when I'm working with the knife for convenience sake I keep it around my neck so that I can put it back in the sheath when I'm not using it but as a general rule, walking around and doing things, I do not have this thing hanging off my neck for that reason. Now, you could tuck this thing down into your shirt if you wanted to, but then again, the metal's gonna gather moisture at that point, and you're not gonna be taking very good care of your blade. So I just as soon keep this thing in my haversack or my backpack when it's not in use, and then conveniently have it around my neck at camp if I am gonna have it in use. That's why I have a bigger knife for the trail. I carry the Pathfinder Scout the majority of the time. And then I keep this Pathfinder Trapline Companion for smaller carving and notching tasks like we're about to do right now. For this project, guys, we're going to need four pieces of wood. We need one piece of wood that is basically a fork that's been cut off of a tree. So I've left a fork here and a longer thing that I can use for my suspension of my pot to move it up and down. And this will be the stick that will put our point notches in. Now, generally speaking, I see most of the time when people do this and talk about this, they're using a fairly soft wood. Soft woods are very easy to carve, but soft woods don't last very long over time once you've killed the tree by cutting it like this. So I prefer to use a little bit harder wood. This is a piece of maple that we're making our hook out of. And then the other piece of wood that we're going to need is our suspension stick. And I've got a piece of oak for that, or I'm sorry, a piece of hickory for that. And we'll use that as our suspension stick. Again, this stuff will last and stand over time. It's not going to rot away very quickly. Then we just need a couple forks. And they can be of any kind of stick that you want. And again, when you're going to cut a fork that you're going to pound into the ground, you don't want to cut the Y really out of a tree. Because when you pound on it, you're going to split it out. So what you really want is you want a fork that has a branch coming off of it. And this was actually the trunk of the tree and you've cut off at the trunk and left your fork here so that you can pound from here and not damage your fork and we'll talk a little bit more about that as far as prepping that fork for pounding here in a minute so we're going to even these two forks up make them about the same size just for aesthetic value we're going to point the end of them so we can shove them in the ground and then we're going to prep these fork ends to be pounded with a baton now as far as a baton goes i've just got a cut off piece of oak that is about an inch and a half in diameter. You can use anything for a baton. You're going to want a baton unless you've got an ax, but if you're going to hit the back of your knife for any reason, you're gonna want a wooden baton for that. And you can carve a fancy hammering type baton, but if you're not gonna do big things with that, and you're not gonna split big pieces of wood, and all you're really working on is small stuff, you can get away with something about an inch and a half hardwood that you can get a good grip on and close your hand all the way around, and that will work just fine for a device to use for batoning the back of your knife. Okay, so let's start with our two forks first. The first thing I want to do is I've obviously got to prep the end and put points on those. 
So I can do that a couple different ways. I can use a chest lever grip on this thing where I'm just pulling against the knife with the wood and spreading my arms apart. And that's a really good, safe method for carving wood because the knife is never going to come in contact with you. And there's no way that you can slip with that thing and hurt yourself or hurt someone else. And again, if you're using good pieces of hardwood, this might take a little bit of time. I've got some good green pieces of hardwood here. And they don't have to be all the way to a point. We're putting them in dirt. We're not trying to pound them through rocks. So we just got to get a decent pointed tip on here. And we'll be in pretty good shape. And then if we want to, you know, work a little tighter in here, we can get that knife and choke up on it. You really don't want to put your thumb on the back of your knife, you know, unless you're doing really, really fine carving, but you can use your other thumb for that. You really always want to grip your knife in this fashion so that your thumb's never hanging out, your fingers are never hanging out. You really want to grip it like this. And then use your other thumb for the control to push that knife where you want it to go. And just keep a good solid grip on the one side. And like I said, we don't need to make this too pointed. I'm not overly concerned with that. I just want to get a semi point on here. And this would be the same thing of making a tent stake. Now on this side, what I want to do is when I am going to pound on something or baton this into the ground with my ax or baton, and I'm going to be hitting on top of something. And in this fork, I remember this fork's the one connected to the trunk. And this is a pretty bad example. The other one's a better example because this side's bigger than this side. On this one, you've got the opposite. This is a little smaller where it's coming out of the tree and the fork is a little heavier. But anywhere we're gonna be pounding on this, and I'm gonna be pounding on this side so I don't split that fork off. I wanna be pounding straight up and down on this stick. I'm going to prep this to be pounded so that it doesn't mushroom out by just rounding it over. And the only thing I'll do with that is I'll take my knife and I'll just make some shear cuts on there very simple just to kind of round that edge off so that when I'm hitting it it's not going to mushroom I'm not trying to make a point I'm just trying to make kind of what looks like a the top of a pencil eraser on that thing is all I really want then I'll be able to hit down on that without splitting it out or mushrooming it out and I can do the same thing on this one if I want to get fancy or I can just leave it the way it is. It's not gonna hurt anything to be like that. And then I'll do the same thing with our other fork and we'll have our forks prepped. Okay, so I'm prepping the bottom of my support stick. And again, this is a piece of oak, so it's pretty hard. So what I wanna do is I want to shave one end of this down a little bit so that I can go into the ground. And it's going to be hard to sit there and chest lever a piece of hardwood like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to get on the edge of this stump. Make sure that I'm outside of this triangle. So if this knife slips, it's not going anywhere near my legs. Then I'm going to tuck this piece of wood under my arm. And use it like a lever. And I'm going to use my knife as a shear. Just like this, going straight down. And that will allow me to hog off more wood and get that to a point in quicker fashion than trying to chest lever something that's made out of a piece of hardwood. And if I choke up on my knife as far as I can, and use this portion of my knife, I'm gonna get really good leverage on that thing. If I try to do it out here, I'm gonna get fine shavings, but I'm not gonna get good leverage to hog off wood. If I really wanna hog the wood off, I've gotta get up in here. And that will allow me to do that. And I can always lessen the pressure or move out on the knife if I'm trying to shape it and get finer shavings off of it. And that's close enough for me. 
Okay, so we have our pointed end of our support stick prepped. Now we need to prep our hanging end. And this is the end that our point notches are going to hang in. And again, I'm just going to use my knife like a shear, get my legs well back and away so if I slip, I'm not going anywhere near my legs and I've got the stump in the way right here. I'm going to put this on the edge of the stump and use my knife for a shear. Find a good spot where there's not a lot of knots and just start taking some material off of this thing. Because what I really want right here is just a flat edge. And again, this is a piece of hardwood. So hogging a bunch of wood off this with a small knife is not going to be easy. And I want to go about, and I got a knot right there, I want to go about halfway down the width of this wood, give myself a good wide flat surface right there. Just like that. See, I got a knot there, a knot there, and a knot there. But I've went about halfway down through there. Cut that knot out. And I just want a flat platform here. And then I'm going to cut a circle in that flat platform. And when I do that, I'm going to lay this on my working stump or my working bench, whatever I'm using, and put my knife inside of it and palm the knife. I'm going to palm my knife and I'm going to turn the knife just like this, very slowly to work basically an indention or a hole in here. And I do not want to rotate this knife around to where it's going to slip off or I'm going to cut myself. I'd rather rotate the piece. Again, keeping my palm on my knife so I can't slip down onto it. Keeping my legs well back and cut that notch out of there. Again, you're talking about a piece of hardwood here, so it's not going to be a real easy task to get that cut in there. Because you're almost trying to start like you, a hole like you would start for a bow drill, but you're trying to do it in a piece of hardwood. Okay, so now we're ready to cut our point notches. And I'm going to move the camera up here close when we do that, but we're going to put our notches to the inside. In other words, our hook is here. Our notches are going to be on the inside of the stick, not the outside. They're going to be on the inside. So that when we hang our pot over the fire, we are pulling on those notches. And we'll put our notches here, 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 and give ourselves three or four levels of adjustment on that pot. So we want that thing to hang this direction where it's balanced. We don't want those notches out here where it's pulling away. We want them here where that bucket's actually pulling them toward that point notch. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute when we get the point notches in there. All right, so I think I've got the camera close enough that you guys can see this really, really well. We're going to put our first point notch about right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife and we're going to make an angular cut this direction toward the center of our piece. So we're just going to lay our knife on there, right on the belly, get this thing straight up and down, and we're going to baton that in, just like that. Then we're going to come to the other side, and we've got a slash there now, and we're going to put another slash right beside that, keeping that thing centered at about the right angle, at about the same angle, and we're going to do the same thing. And we don't have to hit this thing real, real hard to get this job done. Just like that. So now I have kind of an X pattern in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across and my point is going to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come below where those cross hatches are, just a little bit below the cross hatches, and I'm going to baton into the wood about a quarter of the way down. Now what I should be able to do with my knife is I should be able to trim away the portion that's not point by coming in here and pushing forward. And that should pop right off, and you can see the bark peeled a little bit, and that's okay. I don't care about that. And then when I come in here and push against this, it's going to pop everything out and leave that point, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. And again, this is green wood. So this stuff is going to act a little different than something that you had that was dead and dry. But you can see how that point is formed in there now. 
So now what we're going to do is we're just going to undercut that a little bit with our hand. Make sure that we have that cut through where we need it to be right here, just like that. And then we'll just continue to underscore that a little bit, just like this, and trim it out. And that should give us a pretty good spot right there that that will hang on our pot hanger. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to take that point right there and we're going to make three more of them up the stick and then we're going to show you how that works on the suspension stick itself. And you can clean that out just a little bit in there if you want to. And just go in there with your knife and cut down on both sides a little bit, undercut it, underscore it just a shade, just like that. And trim that out. And that'll just give you a little bit more stability of your point notch when you're done. But that's exactly what you want it to look like when you're finished, is just like that. Okay, so what we have here is we have three point notches. We have one, two, three. We could easily put a fourth one in here if we wanted to, but three will work for this demonstration. And now I'm going to show you how to suspend your pot using this point hanging system. So we'll walk over to the fire pit where I've already drove in the two forks and put the support stick in, and we'll hang a pot over it and show you that. Stay with me. Okay, so we're ready to utilize our system now. We've got our two wide forks driven into the ground opposite each other. We've got our pointed end into the ground over here on our support stick and we have our notch up here that we drilled in with our knife. Now we're just going to take our pot and put it on the hook and then we can put it in any one of these notches and it will balance itself over the fire. We can then drop down to another notch because we have a three notch system that we can adjust our pot up and down over the fire. Now this is kind of a, it's balanced on there. I don't know, to me that doesn't seem quite as stable as having a tripod, but it is a workable system for sure. And just another way of doing things, another tool for your toolbox. I'll give you a close up of this so you can see how those notches actually work in there on that, on that pivot system so that you'll have a better idea of what you're doing. I'm gonna try to get a close up for you. So hang on a minute, we'll do that, and then we'll sign out for the day. Okay, so now you've got a pretty close-up view of what that hook notch looks like. And I'll move it a couple of times so that you can see what we're doing there. We're just right on the edge of that hole. We could actually chamfer the bottom of the stick a little bit if we wanted to. And it would help it to balance a little bit better probably. But it's working just fine the way it is now with no more effort. But that's how those notches just hook into that little divot you put in there and swing over and balance over your fire so that you can adjust your pot over the fire, just like that. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here for another video today. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, sponsors, and affiliates, and my instructors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.